You've seen my video series on adding an electronic brake to a treadmill motor, and you're still not exactly sure how to wire it up. Let me help you with that. Greetings, fellow DIYer, and welcome to my video. As with so many of my other videos, we are working with electricity. If you are not qualified to work with electricity, you can really hurt yourself. So use this information at your own risk. It has been a long time since I've done a video on my automatic electric braking system for my lathe. And you may be wondering, why is that? Well, there's only one of me and there's a lot of projects that need doing. There's lots of reasons that I haven't circled back to it. But the long and the short answer is, I haven't circled back to it in the shop, so that's why I haven't circled back to it in the video. I did the automatic braking system, I got it set up, I got it bench tested, I tested it on the lathe, and then I set it aside with the intent to create its own housing and get it properly mounted. And Frankly, I just haven't had time to do it. After uploading that video, I've gotten a lot of questions, I've gotten a lot of comments, I've gotten a lot of feedback, and I've also had a lot of people use the same technique, the same components, and successfully add an automatic electric brake to their system. But I've also had people question exactly how it's hooked up. Now, in my previous video, I show a schematic with the triple pole double throw switch, the braking resistor, the relay, and then wires just going off, they're labeled, says goes to AC, goes to the DC from the power supply, those kind of things. But some people are still having a hard time figuring out how this system works with an existing system. So I've taken the time and put together a couple of schematics for you. If you are using an SCR type voltage controller, this is the typical schematic that I show. If you look, you can see the double pole, double throw direction switch. And where that switch is, is where the braking system actually goes. You replace the double pole switch with the triple pole switch, and then everything else ties in. And so if a person is using an SCR and the automatic braking system, this is what the schematic would look like. Now let's say you're using an MC60. This is what the schematic would look like. And lastly, we have the MC2100. As with the other two setups, the braking system goes in place of the double pull, double throw direction switch and wires into the system. So let's talk through the SCR schematic. Basically, this should apply to the MC60 and the MC21 schematic as well. We start with power coming in from the wall. It goes to a master switch. From there, it tees off, and the hot goes to the relay, but in the process goes through the triple pull double throw switch. But we'll come back to that. And we have neutral going to the coil on the AC relay. The other leg of the T goes to the SCR voltage controller, and everything there is the same as other SCR hookups. So it's gonna go through the circuit breaker, the AC inductor, the rectifier, the DC choke, and then we're gonna to go to our triple pole double throw switch. Now I wanna point out that a triple pole double throw switch is a triple pole double throw switch. It doesn't matter what flavor it is. It doesn't matter if it's a rotary switch, if it's a toggle switch, if it's a push button switch. As long as it's a triple pole double throw switch, you can use two of the poles as a direction switch, and you can use a third pole as a way to cut the power going to the relay. From the triple pole double throw switch, we have both the DC current that powers the motor going into the relay, and we also have the AC current that is going to actuate the coil in the relay. On the other leg of the relay, we have the motor and the resistor. Now notice that with the double pole double throw relay, in the normally closed position, you have the motor and the braking resistor hooked up together. That means when there is no power to the relay, the resistor and motor are 
connected and the braking action is happening. But when the coil for the relay is energized, the resistor disconnects from the motor and the power connects to the motor. And that's how we achieve power and direction when then when power to the relay is cut, it applies the brake to the motor. I hope this video helps out. I thought I had covered everything in the previous video, but because I'm getting questions from more than one person, that tells me that I probably should have included schematics like this in that video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. It's comments that resulted in this video, and your comments may result in a future video. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.